to bring in Lalit from um, f- uh, doing his presentation on B2B SaaS growth hacks. Uh, Lalit, welcome. Pleasure to have you. Uh, excited to hear uh, about your presentation. Thanks, Sean. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Sense Growth. Uh, we're building like an tech platform to give the very personalized recommendations to the corporates. Uh, I'll quickly come to the sense grass, but I think we going to discuss, I know a lot of you have heard about this B2B SaaS growth uh, kind of stuff. I, I know this is a pretty common and pretty popular in the startup world, but it looks common and looks you know popular, but I think uh, this is the most important, uh, the tool we can uh, figure it out in any startup world, because like I think building a great product, is fine. Uh, finding a good market as well. But I think if you're not hacking the the growth, the revenue part in your startup, in your company, I think any great product will be failed in the market. So we're going to talk about these things uh, and I'll share my experience, especially in the perspective of a very complicated product as well, includes the hardware, includes the software as well. Uh, so I'll quickly introduce uh, my background. And I think this is again an interesting part as well because it's been eight years I have been into the startup. So my background into the doctor of pharmaceutical science and medicine. So I'm not like in a tech or a coder, hardcore coder. And then I went for an MBA in international marketing, finance and entrepreneurship. After working for the corporate as a business development and business consultant for two years, uh, I just decided to go for the startups, right? And it's been since somewhere around 2015, I launched, I started working on my first company. It was an e-commerce. And I think e-commerce was... Even now as well, I think one of the perfect example of a SaaS growth hacks actually. Um, but I think after after three years working for my first company, uh, Henchcott, it was into e-commerce domain as I as I mentioned with some kind of the machine learning and exponential growth. Um, I I sold my company. It was back in Paris, France. Um, uh, then I was working in other startups. I was helping some of the startups as a consult, consultant uh, because. You know, I've signed the non-competitive agreement after my first exit. And I think that was also the time where the product management to growth hack to SaaS uh, growth was one of my key area to helping the startups. Because the biggest challenge startups usually face is like, you know, building a product is fine, but taking it to the next level is not always difficult. And of course, like in 2019 uh, and 20, I started my second startup called SenseGrass. Um, it's a pretty complicated product and a highly tech product as well. So we are into agri tech and climate tech. We're using our own property soil sensors and a lot of data from the different private sources as well, and combining this to give a very highly, um, you know, personal, uh, personalized recommendations to the corporates into the agro and climate tech. So whether it's a large corporates, large giants like Microsoft to bankings like Morgan Stanley to a agro and food company like PepsiCo, Tesco to the core two as well. Uh, you know, coming myself, I'm an Indian, so I was born and grew up in India. I've studied in India as well, but I've lived uh, almost half of my life out of India, especially uh, the, the interesting fact, actually, I've lived almost in all these seven continents. I've touched all these seven continents, including the Antarctica as well. I've been there for a Robertson expedition. Um, so it's, a, it's a funny thing that I have an experience from all these places as well. So I've built the companies uh, in the different regions, in the different part of the world. But I've also lived and run these companies and helped these startups uh, in the region as well, especially the Europe, uh, the US, which is my major places where I spend most of the time, but including the Latin America as well, and an Asian, uh, being myself in Asian Asia as well. Um, of course, I think I think that one of the biggest learning I have I have gained from my eight year of the startup experience is is like you know. Even if you have a slow growth, but your growth should be very gradual. You should keep growing. You should always take the small steps. If you're not running, you should definitely take the small steps as well. Your company growth should be in a positive direction. It should not be definitely in the negative direction, but it also not should be um, on, on, an, on a where you can just got stuck at one place. Uh, so I think that's the most important learning. But let's talk about the, uh, you know, the uh, apart from my background, the the origin of this story, like origin of this growth strategy, B2B SaaS growth strategy, where it comes from. Uh, as I mentioned, like, you know, I have worked in the e-commerce sector. I have helped uh, 
uh, another startup into the energy and renewable thing. Then I'm building a, the current company is purely a B2B SaaS company, right? And apart from this, I have mentored and helped uh, almost 100 plus startup. I have invested in four startup myself. So pretty much like, you know, the SaaS approach is always there in the company. This is a very common connect or the common dot which connect all these startups. It doesn't matter if you if your company is into the, any part of the sector or any part of the world, whether it's a hardware, software and all, or whether your business model is subscription based or revenue or licensing, anything like that. I think the SaaS is the core of the startup world. Uh, B2B SaaS is most important. This is what investor loves. So even if your company is into the D2C sec- segment or a B2C or B2G, whatever, I think you definitely have to bring the uh, an area or the angle where you can consider yourself as a B2B as well. Because I think this is a, as you can see on the right side, it's the rocket that will take you to the next exponential growth. So I think, as I mentioned earlier, also product building is not hard. You know, this is why startups like, you know, I've seen a lot of great products, a lot of innovative products as well people have people have built. But I think the most of the startups usually fail because they do not implement it, it very well. Uh, scaling with the most less effective product, like, you know, building a very simple or general product, but making a great exponential growth or sales strategy is the most important part as well. So I think as I mentioned, the eight years in startup building, I think, especially with the complicated track product, not a very simple SaaS CRM kind of approach. I think building a tech product uh, in a very complicated industry segment makes me very rigid about like, you know, focusing more on the sales growth as well. We're going to talk about that. Uh, the second important thing, I think that finding the right CMF is more important than right the PMA. So customer market fit is more important than the product market fit. I'm sure like you guys are like, um, what was the customer market fit, right? As we heard about the product market fit. I think customer market fit is like a lot of time, your product sometimes fit into a one good market with some sort of the clients. But if you really want to make it like the repetitive sales, your product should be more CF, CMF focus, like customer market fit, where you can sell to the early adopters, but you can also do the retention with the same kind of customer, but you can easily and equally scale to the other types of market. Because if you stick to one market, which is your country, to one specific set of the customer, and if you're not able to expand to the different regions with the same kind of customer or different kind of customer, I think that's also one of the failure as well. Growth in the complex industries, as I mentioned, like hardware or with the SaaS, of course, approach or or renewable energy or more R and D focus or biotech, I think it's also hard as well. So if you building and if you're a startup in these kind of categories, I think you should definitely consider this workshop for sure. Mm-hmm.